Jesus and Heavenly Father, we thank you that you open our eyes to see your hand at work. That we can come to you with open hearts and receive what you have for us. And Holy Spirit, move on our hearts today as we traverse this unknown and uncertain ground that we face. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. And if there's anybody out on Facebook Live, good morning to you, and we're glad that you're worshiping with us today. It's kind of strange, because I have no idea who's on the other side of that camera. And so, but we'll continue on. And it is good to see you in the house of the Lord today, where we truly do worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King, Jesus. Today, we face an uncertainty. We face challenges. Today, I can see that you are, well very much socially distanced from each other. You have kept that space out here. Of course, there's very few of you here. So, But anyway, we're here to worship the Lord. We're here to share what, what is going on. And I want to share with you what really this topic and this message in our gospel has really meant to me this week. And something that I think we can relate to, something that we can hold on to because of the certain circumstances that we're currently living in. I think about this blind man. And I want to take you back. Think about who he is. Think about what his life was like. He'd been blind since birth. He was a beggar. He was out there. He had no idea who was coming by him. His hope rested upon somebody giving him some alms so that he could at least eat for the day. His life was one in which he was a social outcast. His life was one where he was not well received. They knew who he was. His life was totally different than what it turned out to be. You see, Jesus was walking along and he had his disciples with him. And it's interesting what the disciples said. Is when they saw the blind man, they said, Who sinned, him or his parents? And Jesus' response was interesting because he said it wasn't neither him nor his parents that sinned, but he was blind because it would show the works of God might be displayed in him. Now, some people have said, well, you know, what does that mean? That God made him blind at birth so that he could show his works? I don't believe that's the truth in that part of it. That's a wrong interpretation. It means that he was born blind. Not that God had imposed blindness on him. But we live in a fallen world. We live in a sin sinful world. And this was just to show God's power and presence in a world that's still filled with sin. To show people that God's hand is still at work. God's hand was in their presence. God's work was in their presence. It was to open their eyes so that they might see. So Jesus does something. He makes a little bit of spittle and mud and puts it on his eyes and he tells the blind man, go to the pool of Siloam. Go to this place. Siloam, as it said in the scriptures, means sent. And so this man had to make his way to the pool of Siloam. Blind still. Until he washed and opened his eyes. And then he could see. Imagine what it must have been like for him. The thing is, is that when Jesus had done this, he didn't know that it was Jesus. He didn't know what Jesus looked like, so he couldn't pick him out in a crowd because he'd been blind up until that time. The only thing that he might know is Jesus' voice. That's the only thing he might know. And so as... He's able to see now his parents rejoice in that. His neighbors look at him and say, is this the one? And there's a confession. They take him to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees, who did this to you? And he said, Jesus. Now, the interesting thing from this is that they couldn't see beyond what was happening. They couldn't see God's hand at work. Because it had been done on a Sabbath. And they said, nobody can do the work on Sabbath. But what it shows us is that Jesus is working all the time in our lives. 
Jesus is present 24-7. He is there doing the work for us and being with us. It's a security that we have. It's an assurance that we have of His faithfulness. The Pharisees questioned Him and talked to Him and they thought Jesus couldn't do this. But it's interesting, the man defended Jesus. He defended him on his own. When his parents were afraid to defend him and said, you, you ask him, he's of age. The reason was is because they were afraid that they would be thrown out of the synagogue. The synagogue was their life because it was not just a place of worship, but it was a community in which they worshipped. It was a community in which their friends were. And if they'd been thrown out, they would have been cast out from their friends. They would have been exiled. They would no longer have been in relationship. And in those days it was important to have that, that security, to have that network to be available to you. But this blind man who'd been made whole again stood and confessed Jesus. He stood and he defended Jesus and who he is. Now I think about today and some of the things that we're going through. I mean this is an uncertain time and we're faced with many challenges. But I think there's a parallel here between the challenges that we face and the challenges that the blind man faced. Because you see until Jesus is in our hearts, until we can follow him, we don't have that assurance. The blind man, when he became whole again, when he could see, his life changed. But it only changed because Jesus made his presence known in his life. He could have been blind forever, but Jesus changed his life. And he had that assurance and that hope now. He knew where that power came from. And it's the same way with us. We face this uncertainty. We face a time in which is unprecedented. But yet we can have that hope in the power of our Lord. We can have that hope in the assurance and who he is. The same challenges that he, the blind man faced at that time are the same challenges we face. But we also see that God's hand is present and at work in our lives today. God's presence is there and the hope is within him that he doesn't leave us nor forsake us. The ending of our gospel shows the blind man coming to him. And he says, Do you believe in the Son of Man? And he answered and says, Who is he? And Jesus told him who he was. I am he, the one who is speaking. And he said three words. He says, I actually said two words. Actually three. Lord, I believe. You see, his faith was not in the things of the world, but his faith rested upon who Jesus was. Lord, I believe. You see, the assurance that he had was about God's faithfulness. The assurance that he had was about God's presence in his life. The assurance that he had was about the power of God being given to him and exhibited in him. Our psalm today, I think, really brings us back to that point. We read the 23rd Psalm today. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. It shows that relationship that we have with Jesus and only if he is our shepherd will we not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He brings us to a place where we have an assurance where while the world is going crazy around us, we have that hope and that comfort in who He is to carry us through these situations and these times. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside those still waters. And He restores my soul. That's the greatest thing. Our souls and our bodies can be restored and strengthened because of knowing that His power and presence and His comfort and the Holy Spirit is in us today. I think there's many similarities in any part of our life, but especially in today's time. 
when we do face these uncertainties and these challenges. But the one thing that we are not uncertain about, and we have that assurance and that certainty, is about God's presence in our lives. God's presence to lead us. God's presence to heal us. Let your prayer be this 23rd Psalm. Let it be embedded in your heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Because he's always with me. He restoreth my soul. And while the world's in chaos, I can always go to him for my hope. Amen. The man who was blind lived with the uncertainty and the challenges each and every day. He had no idea if he was going to have enough money. He had no idea who was around him. So he lived in those tumultuous times of his life. He had to trust others around him. Jesus saw him. Jesus reached out to him. Jesus changed his life. And in uncertain times, Jesus changes our lives because we have the hope and the assurance of who he is. We can trust in him to be with us. When the man said, Lord, I believe, let our heart say, Lord, I believe. You are the Son of God, the one who takes care of us, the one who is with us. You are our shepherd. You lead us beside still waters and you revive our souls. And knowing that and having it in our heart, we'll be able to go into the world in peace. We will be of good courage. We'll hold fast that which is good. We won't render anyone evil for evil. We'll strengthen those who are faint-hearted. We'll support those who are weak. We'll help those who are afflicted. We'll honor all persons. And we, will lo we do it because we love and serve the Lord. And we rejoice because He gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to do it. And so now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. When we have the joy of Jesus in our heart, it is very easy to sing to the King. Our going forth song today is Sing to the King. Let us stand and let us sing to the king. <laughs>